what's up? Aren't you doing it for the likes? <laughs> nah, I ain't doing it for the likes. Ah, uh, 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 oh, okay, oh, hold up, hold up. So you doing it for the pussy? Nah, I, I, I mean, yeah, no, 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 I, I ain't doing it for that. Okay, then, what are you doing it for? Man, I do it for the culture. Something we're not filming anything right now, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I was trying to get you. Okay, okay. <laughs> I like it starting like this. See you later. Oh, now we gotta wait till later. Fuck. I was trying to get some insights, conversations. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. All right. Well, what's going on, guys? This is another episode of For the Culture Podcast, episode number what, 23? Mike Jordan's number? All right, all right. Uh, today we got a very uh, special, special show. I know I said it every week, but this week is actually, I mean it. Because um, I got two guests who I think uh, do a lot for the comedy scene out in L.A. And it meant a lot to me that I, that I could have both of them come on at the same time and we're going to shoot the shot. There's some of the dopest bookers. Uh, one to my left, she uh, books the Chocolate Sundays and runs the Chocolate Sundays Ent- Enterprise, and that's produced a bunch of comedy uh, specials and showcases, and a lot of comedians got their break from doing that show. And they're every Sunday, two shows, packed crowds. Uh, since I've been coming out to L.A., that was one of the first shows I said I had to go because I used to watch people perform on YouTube, and I was like, I'm definitely going to go do that show. And I've had the chance to, to do that show. It's been great. And so I want to uh, welcome Lonnie Crooks, a.k.a. Lonnie Dottie, a.k.a. Trap. Lonnie, how you doing, Lonnie? <laughs> What's going I'm on? Great, thank you. Thank you for coming through today. I appreciate that. I know it's hot as shit, guys. Uh, bear with me. Uh, to my right, um, I have another uh, prominent, very, very just dope person and Booker as well. Um, I've known her since I pretty much first started coming out here. Um, you know, she didn't have to put me on stage, but enough comics who she fucked with said he's good give him a shot and uh we've just been able to just you know be cool about everything and she really works hard and i respect her hustle and um she does a lot for the comedy community um works with dave Chappelle and neil brennan a bunch of other great artists and books the mellow comedic show that can be seen uh is it a once a month at the comedy store or tw- by bi- weekly once a month. Once a month at the Comedy Store. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Mello. What's up, Sarah? How are you? Miss Mello. Mm, and she Portuguese. I, I, I don't know why. I feel like that's such an exotic thing about you because you just kind of look like a white girl. But <laughs> when you find out you're Portuguese, Sarah, you don't understand how much sauce different. that gives you. Yeah. And, and both of these oh, sorry, both of these bookers, too, um, for whatever reason, and I don't know, I think maybe it's their parents, the, the, how they grew up, but they fuck with black comedians. They, they, the culture, they, uh, they have a, a sensitivity to it that I would say some bookers just don't. And they understand that black, not that all comics don't have a struggle or don't have it hard, but they understand that there's just a little bit of a different, uh, obstacles that uh, black comedians go through and they empathize with that. And, um, they just definitely put us in a lot of positions to succeed. So I want to say thank you again, ladies, uh, for recognizing that, you know what I'm saying? That's, uh, I, th- I just think they're funnier. <laughs> Lonnie keeping it a hundred. Sarah, how do you feel about black comedians and white comedians and Indian? No, I'm just kidding. And Portuguese. And Portuguese, and Portuguese comedians, comedians however many favorite. Portuguese comics are. Uh, so Lonnie, you just, I, you just you just vibe with black shows better. That's that's just yeah. the, the truth. So when let me ask you something. When did you uh, go to your first comedy show? Like how old were you when you went out to to see a live show? Chocolate Sunday. Chocolate was, was your first, first live show. show. Okay. That's why that's how I started. I came down here, I went to um I started at Long Beach State, mm-hmm. and while I was there, Ben was promoting the show. Uh, um, shout out to the homie Ben. At, on this website called The Club Mix. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What year was this? This is MySpace oh my era God. we talking? This, yes. Like, this early? was 2004. Okay. Okay. The yeah, Club definitely Mix, MySpace. If there are people that uh-huh. are listening that were on The Club Mix, club please mix. hit me up, because we were a community. Are y'all doing like a Club a Mix family. reunion? <laughs> Next year is going to be 15 years. Do the Club Mix reunion. <laughs> we should. It was like it was like Facebook and MySpace, like a community before mm-hmm. all that stuff was really hot. And yeah. oh, it was so great. We all had our little clicks. Like so after that, groups. after going to that show, did uh, did Ben was in your top eight? Did he get to your top eight or at least top forty? Oh, uh, <laughs> no, we we didn't have. We, I don't think we were friends on okay, MySpace. Okay. I don't remember that. Gotcha. Uh, but anyway, so I went to the show. He was promoting. It. I went to the show. Yeah. And my first time, I was like, I have to be a part of this. It was so cool. And I was watching stand up on oh, TV. Yeah, yeah. Like Jamie Foxx's stand. Up was what really got me into. Oh, which one? Um, I like. I like Jamie. I don't remember the one. The one where he talked about J Lo. You know, hey, hey. Oh, 
That's uh, I might need security. I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah, in yes. Oakland. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that yes, one. Yes, that one was what really got me into watching comedy, and okay. then the show was like. And then you, so so you went to chocolate, and then uh, and then how did you progress as from you know being booker to running the the day to day operations for for chocolate Sundays? Okay, well the booking is the last thing that came. Ah, okay. That was a big deal for Pookie to let go. That mm. was kind of like the last piece, and it just happened maybe six months ago. What? And that was his final like release of the show, Damn. and it was a big deal. It was for a big him. deal because yeah. that was his connection. Because he's so busy now. I mean, he still. Loves Loves the comedy world, but of, of he course. just doesn't have time. Yeah, when he really comes out, it's like almost like, yo, you know, Pookie might stop by tonight. Like, yeah. It's like word of mouth and shit. Yes, he, but um, he loved booking still because it gave him a tie to the community and sure. to all the comedians. You know, that's how he still talked to them. Mm -hmm. So it was a big deal for him to let that but, go. But he got basketball teams that he's taking across the country. <laughs> he ain't got time to stop by chocolate no more. Uh, Sarah, so when did... Uh, I guess when did you first go to like your live show, get that experience? How did that like? My first live show was my first day of work at the Laugh Factory. At the Laugh Factory. I had never watched stand up before. You never watched stand up? So you went through life, you, you just high school and living in Boston, right? New Bedford. Ma New Bedford, Massachusetts. Okay. <laughs> and then um, you just, so you go out to California. I think I know some of the story because we've, we've gone to swingers and, 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 and shoot the <laughs> shit. And Sarah somehow ended up, was it for a guy you came out here for or just a job? But then no. you got screwed over. <laughs> Remember, yeah. You, yeah, somebody took your money and you felt like you were going to be asked out and have to like move back. And then you decided to just make it work. What's it? Mm, Something like that. Like kind of, but not really. I was here on vacation, <laughs> vacation and decided to stay. There we go. But I was. That's similar to a uh, food story. Yeah. My bad food. Um, but there was a, the first, I was in the dental field and the first job uh, I took. Okay. I was kind of like scammed. So then I, yeah, I didn't have a job. Some, some but like then that. I was like, got another dental job, but also okay. got a job at. The Laugh Factory, just because I didn't know anyone and, else and in you, L.A., so I figured I'd get another And you job. just fell in love with watching stand-up comedy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who were, like, some of the first comics that you that stands out from those days when you were, like, working my at first, the uh, uh, My first, my very, very, very first friend was Godfrey. I uh, love Godfrey. He was also my birthday twin. He oh. was, like, he taught me everything I know about mm -hmm. comedy and L.A. Wow. Okay. So I hung out intro. mostly with, yeah. And he's black. Yeah. <laughs> Godfrey, um... Ian Edwards. Ian, good peoples. Crystalia. Good peoples. Um, Joe Coy was around a lot. Daniel ah, Tosh. Yeah. Uh, Dean Edwards. Oh, to like be in town man, from New York. Let me tell you something about it. Dean is like, I think he's like in the top five. He's super funny, but he's like top five just like good guys yeah. in yes. comedy. Mm -hmm. Like there's just nothing... Is there nothing bad you can say about it? like the guy is just so he's so nice like I, I put try pride myself on being a nice guy too, uh, but I think I've done too much damage on my Facebook so I can be squeaky clean because <laughs> I talk a lot of shit. Lonnie Lonnie's also one of my best Facebook friends too. Uh, we getting cool in real life, but Facebook that's is where we, this is where we really bond. Yeah. But Dean is just like BFFF. BFFF. But yeah. Dean is yeah Dean is just such a great dude and you know super funny and talented as well. Um, no Sarah, I love the story you told about him about when the comedians were sitting around talking about their wives and stuff. Do you remember the story you told me? Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Can was, you share? Yeah, I was out to eat. I won't say with the other comics. <laughs> yeah. No, that's right. We're going to not name names, but name some comics that me, were there. Yeah. Uh, Dean Edwards, and a few other a few comics. few others selected. And we yeah. were all just eating, and all, oh, man, should I say this or? I guess. Yeah. So I'm story. not saying the other yeah. comics. They were all just complaining about, like, their wives and... What, and some of them are like, well, I'm just waiting until my kids turn 18. Or, they, like, all sharing out. different stories about how miserable they were. <laughs> and, like, the whole time, Dean's just, like, sitting there eating, eating, eating. And even, like, of course, I, I'm, like, not finishing my food. He's like, can I have some of that? Like, picking off everyone's plate. And, like, like when everyone's done talking, Dean's just like... I don't know what you guys are talking about. I love my wife. <laughs> he just like it was just so Waffle, funny. Please. He was like in his own world. He was the only one eating. He was like basically like I'm happy. I don't know. <laughs> like, okay. Sorry, you guys aren't. So okay, so Lonnie, now you uh, spoke emphatically that you just prefer watching black uh, comedians. So do you like remember? Trying to go to shows where I guess the lineups will be different, and you just not having it's fun. Like, what do you think is the like the issue? Like for when you go to like mainstream or bar shows, or compared to a show that just predominantly has a, a black or Latino lineup or whatever. So I don't think everything is just about the lineup. For, okay, um, and okay. I'm really biased to Chocolate Sundays being the best show because it's my show. I get that, but yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. I hear that from everyone. But I think a lot of it has to do with the room in general. Mm. I think the Laugh Factory versus other clubs and venues 
is just set up perfectly yeah. for the comedy show. It, I, I, the I ceilings agree. are the lighting, lower. Laugh's the my lighting. Favorite. It just seems really intimate. Yeah. Um, versus like uh, the comedy store, which is like huge, you know? Okay. Um, like the main room that, is just yeah. big with really tall ceilings. That, that main room is not fun oh. if the show is light. Yeah. That so. factor, you can still have fun with a light crowd. But yeah. The, yeah, when it's the, when you, you get excited if you think, oh, I'm going to do the main room tonight. And then the crowd is like you know, 25 and it's just like, oh. Yeah. I told everybody so, to come. <laughs> Nobody came. So that's part of it. Um, I think the DJ, the music is a big part of our show. I don't think still even DJ Sidekick, our sidekick, really realizes how important he is to the entire operation. I, I, I agree. Um, that really has become apparent the last few weeks because something has been going on with the speakers. Mm. And like one week there was like no bass and it was really quiet. And we were all sitting there saying... The, can we have a show without music? <laughs> and, and, and here's what I, I also give you uh, credit for. Like, I, I, I like to, you know, pop in every you know, couple months or whatever like that. Because, um, But you don't have the shows where you're booking comics that, like, rely on the DJ to make their sets go. Because I mm-hmm. I, if you get into, like, purest comedy, like, a lot of comics, we just hate comics who use the DJ too much in their sets. Because then it doesn't really, like, what can you do if the DJ's not there? But you book really funny comics who don't need the DJ, but the DJ enhances the show with the music and the Dance contest. Are y'all doing the Kiki Challenge this Sunday? Or y'all no, did it last again. Sunday? Well, we did it two weeks ago when okay. it was first I was going to write a status. I'm like, <laughs> over under Laugh Factory does the Kiki Challenge for chocolate. Yes. <laughs> so we did it that way. And then we just had um, we had Kiki Shepard that came to the show last oh, week. Shit. So we had her go up on stage and do it because it was her birthday. Oh, that's so. dope. So yeah, no, the challenge is done. We're putting that to sleep. Putting that until a new challenge but, comes about. Yes. So anyway, aside from the room and the music, um, I think... The shows, black quote unquote black shows, um, I think the audience has a lot to do with it because they're mm-hmm. more hype, they're louder, they laugh louder. You yeah. know, if you bomb, you bomb hard. Mm-hmm. Um, it's harder to do well with a black audience, I think. But if you do well, yeah. you will kill it because they're, it. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I think that's what Absolutely. makes the room different versus like a white, yeah, a white show. What what I dig uh, with uh, with Sarah because you book like a. I would say one could say it's one of the best workout rooms that's around. And on the Tuesday night at Westside Theater, mm-hmm. you know, Brennan. And then you have like the Mellow Comedic shows or some of the other shows. And you were booking Comedy Juices, another one, like one of the hottest shows. So like a lot of the, even the the type of shows that you do are like really different. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said before, I think you do understand sort of the plights that black comedians, black female comedians, Latino, whatever, go through. And you kind of like try to put them in, in, um, uh, on bigger on bigger showcases and whatnot. So like, how do you, do you feel that same way that Lonnie kind of feels with the energy and just kind of like the state of the room, you know? With the difference in shows? Yeah, yeah. I do agree. And I even, um, I did the, uh, was it like 20th anniversary mm-hmm. of um, Trippin' on Tuesdays? With, okay. Um, with, with Guy Tori. Oh, A couple okay. of years ago, we did it, I forget, like Nokia Theater. Or oh, something. shit. And it was funny, a, a white female comedy booker mm. came to the show and even she was so imp- like impressed and blown away and she was like wow the and she was like people dressed up to come to the show it's an event. <laughs> and it, yes chocolate and sundays is an she event said. like yeah. she was like wow it's just a completely different energy and completely different vibe where was she from like what where did, what city does she or la she's an la yeah. booker okay um, yeah, there's definitely a difference. And like, like Lonnie said, DJ has a big difference. Mm-hmm. I think I, I book all different types of show and I have yeah, that's why. different themes for all of them. I have different reasons for how I book each show. Mm-hmm. And Can we get into that kind of, uh, yeah. like what do you, okay. So give us like a specific show that you have this sort of attitude about this lineup has to do this for like, that serves this purpose. Like. Like, what I goes mean, into the mind when you're setting up that things. show? Um, you know, Neil, so obviously I work with Neil, yeah. so it has to all be approved by him as well. But it's a workout room. It's a smaller room. Yeah. And it, we've been doing it for six and a half going, almost, actually, it'll be seven years in September now. Yeah. So that one kind of fills itself, so I can kind of book who I want, yeah. you know? You know what I like about that room? It's weird. It's funny, right? So, like... Chocolate Sundays, it's like, bring it, nigga, or the energy is just, bring it, nigga, or get the fuck off the stage. In on that Tuesday show, if you ever go, the crowd actually can tell when you're trying to, like, do your set and be funny, and they don't like it. They actually embrace you trying to experiment and find something Yo, on stage. It's I like, like a complete mindfuck. Yeah. Like, I remember, you know, when, like, I think probably the first time I did her show, 
uh, I had a good set and out because I was I just wanted to rock it so that Sarah could see. Okay, he's funny. I can book him again. And the crowd didn't respond like the way that I would like to because they were like they could just tell I was doing a set and not really working out. Mm -hmm. And she saw that was funny. She was like, "That's okay, don't worry about it." And then like the next time, I really tried to work out and I had an even better set. Mm -hmm. Like it was it was oh, so I like weird. That. You have to like yeah. kind of train your 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 thinking when you're doing her show because the crowd expects you to really like. You know, that's when you could really hold, put your hand on the mic stand and like think about something and mm -hmm. workshop it. It's like, yeah. it's, I, I and, think that's really or cool. Or actually take a pad of paper on stage and Read do it. Right. Oil. That's the whole yeah. point yeah. and theme of the show is yeah. to work out your new stuff. So, yeah. especially bring your phone or papers. Everyone does it. Oh, I like and that. And also, yeah. that crowd. Yeah. You know, West Side Comedy Theater's in an alley in Santa Monica. So if you <laughs> it's go, a nice alley, though. it's a Hollywood know, alley. But like the it's people who alley. go there, yeah. know comedy. You don't they like do. stumble upon it. Yeah. So they're they really it. good comedy fans. Actually, a comic I was talking to who wants to do some dates was like, "That's a real workout room." Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, and a comic the other night was like, "It's crazy." He did the show last week and he he tried a new joke and it didn't work at all. And he said he tried it a few times throughout the week and it didn't work. Mm. And he was almost getting ready to get rid of it. And then he came this week and it crushed. Ah. And so he was like, thank you for letting me do this two weeks in a row because I was really ready to get rid of this, this show. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think usually comic, usually we, we tell ourselves if it don't work maybe three to five times, we should burn it. We got a comic here, our engineer, uh, Paul Double Duties. Paul, how many times you try a joke before you say, fuck it, this, this, this ain't going to work? One time, no, I'm joking. Uh -huh. <laughs> Now, yeah, maybe like four or five times. Yeah. And then I'm just like, all right, it's yeah. done. So well, I like how um, when Lonnie's at the at Chocolate Sunday, he's like, Lonnie, Lonnie really sits down and, and watches the comics. Like, she's she's Booker, but she's also a fan of the, of the comedy and watching the shows. And I think I've seen probably guys try to, like, work out before, and, like, she'll feel type of way. Like, I've seen, like, you kind of like, no, this motherfucker didn't just try and work out a joke and clean that shit up. Like... <laughs> No, I don't mind it if, um, if you know like, it. our hosts, right, right. I actually prefer that they do because mm. that's their space. You yeah, know, yeah. they um, and they get up multiple times, and then they have a chance, if it doesn't work, to do something after. Right. And I don't mind if people do it at the beginning of their set. Okay. But, um, but yeah, I think that they should. But, but minute, minute two, minute that. three. <laughs> the laughs better start coming. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know why you wouldn't want to do that at the show because right. people will just be well, staring at you oh, uncomfortably. That's how I feel about my comedy store shows. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. doing that show. You better kill. And somebody did that one time. They used it as workout, and I was like, okay, mm -hmm. noted. <laughs> Yo, I love the. Okay. Why would you so want to? Let, let's let's right? be petty because I really enjoy petty shit. I think, Lonnie, we bonded on petty shit. Wait. When, we bonded on petty shit on Facebook before. So what? if somebody decides to work out and that shit doesn't go right, right, and you make the mental note, how many months would you say is before you book them again on the spot? Like, what's the punishment, quote unquote? Well,. With that specific comic, I was like, oh, okay, that's what you're doing. Mm. And then I booked him on my workout show room. Oh, uh, okay. So he got, so, you're going to go, yeah, you're, you're not going to do that show again if, if you're just using it to work out because I have a lot of pressure on me for that show. I, I feel you. No, so. I, absolutely. And then you also do, uh, both of you actually do like charity shows. You do benefit shows that mm -hmm. for, for fundraising and stuff like that. You raise awareness. Have you done? You've we, done some, right? Well, we did that basketball tournament recently. Right. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> yeah, tournament. let's not talk about that. Because uh, this is one of the. <laughs> I'm going to share because I think it's really cute. I've never uh, gotten cut without a reward before. <laughs> so I had tried out for the basketball team, right? And uh, <laughs> I thought I played well. Her brother was a conditioning coach. You know, I struggled. My brother. Wait. He's just the Asian guy. Oh, yes. oh wait. <laughs> Like, I Lonnie thought he was your brother. brother? Y'all looked, y'all looked alike. I know I'm sorry. exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> that is so Wait. rude. He could be your brother. <laughs> Just because you got cut is, is doesn't it, mean it, you have to start making. I'm not being. Jokes. I'm not being. Okay. <laughs> is he Korean though? <laughs> no. Oh, he's not. All right, then that's I that, that, that comes off a yeah, little racist. He's like Thai or something. Uh, I don't even know what Jeff is. What what, what kind of Asian are you? You're Korean. Half or Korean. Okay, and what's the other half? White. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. So he's what not. What kind of Asian? What, can I ask what kind of black are you? Absolutely. Is I'm Haitian. I'm Haitian. I'm Haitian. <laughs> okay, but is that appropriate? Yeah, is you that could. a good way to ask? Yeah, because black people who like you, they don't angle mine, so they know where you're coming from. <laughs> you know, they'll tell you whether they black, black, or Caribbean black, or African black. You know, stuff okay. So I had to, you know. Um, so, <laughs> so I uh, I tried out to this for the for the Chocolate Sunday <laughs> team. Conditioning day one, I, I'll give it. I, str I struggled. I wasn't. I wasn't ready. Right. I had a rough day. I couldn't get through the uh, just the warm up stuff or whatever because I hadn't played in a while. But then day two, I came back. Actually, you know, the same day I came back, 
and we played good pickup ball, and I was busting ass. Day two, did the same thing. But then my boy, he uh, hurt his shoulder, and I had to take him to the hospital. So I thought I played well, relatively speaking. Um, I go away, and then uh, Lonnie tells me that just you know I just couldn't I couldn't play in the game. It's okay though. I'm not mad. You know why I'm so not? Why mad? are you bringing it up? I'm not because we talked about the right. game. So, but then Lonnie says, "Hey, but you know what? I'm gonna get you a spot on the show. Do you want to do that?" And I'm like, "Oh shit, getting cut don't feel so bad." Then I'm just like, oh, "Fuck it, I'm, I'll do it. <laughs> it's okay." And he's How was doing the, game? the show on my birthday. I'm doing a yeah. So she gave me a big ass super. treat. Yeah. So fuck yes. that game. How, how they do though? How, I didn't. Nobody told me. Nobody spoke about the game. That's so that's why it's, it could have been. No, we lost. We spoke about it. We posted about it. So here was the problem. This was my fault. I take full responsibility. Yeah. I was under the impression Jeff was going to come to host or to coach. Ah, okay. And um, I forgot he had told me he wasn't in town. Mm. So we had BT coach. Jeff, you're not brother. You're, yeah, you're Jeff, not, my not brother. <laughs> um, who's a completely different ethnicity. That's, that's the city, way, but he's a nice brother. guy yeah. and he's very cool. So I had BT coaching, which actually worked out fine. We were within six. Oh, okay. But then he had to leave for a flight and I didn't have a backup coach and I forgot about the egos uh-huh. and people aren't mm-hmm. going to be like, hey, these five who are our best should be in the game. Because so, so, everybody wants to get in and it was just, it was all over So the in a way, BT was actually holding it down. He was. Wait, who did you play against? The police. We did a charity oh. tournament. Were they all? The they, what kind of uh, cops were they? Were they like in shape, like cops who just like uh, twenty three years old? They just got their badge and they used well, to play. There was one that was like Balling. Kobe. He was okay. Kobe. Yeah. Damn. And they had a girl that was awesome. She was killing oh, shit. Yes. Wow. Okay. They were ready. All right. We weren't ready. Next. But we could have been there if we had a coach. Yeah. Like if Pookie would have been there to coach, he would have managed the game. We, right. Yes. So it was just game management. Okay. Yes. All right. I'm not mad at that. Our players were good. We had Kevin Tate. I know good. Kevin. Yeah. Kevin Aaron played. Edwards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. I heard A's good. Lulu came, who's really good. I suggested her. I'm glad. Okay, uh-huh. good. Um, who else was really? So I was like GM because I, I she she did like a status where we got to like tag who can play, and I was just like, okay, with the women, I know for sure Lulu's a baller. Like Lulu does this. Um, did DC end up playing? Did Keon play? Keon played. Okay. DC played. Okay, good, good. Yeah, no, our players were good. That's dope. Okay, so back to I think the question was about fundraiser shows. You've done, but you you have done some benefit shows, no? Ye- I haven't personally. I know Chocolate Sundays has. Okay, okay. Yes, but I haven't in the two years that I've been back. Okay. But we actually are going to start something, um, which I can't speak on yet, but right. I think we're going to start uh, some new events. in a, Awesome. Yeah. Well, you did do an event. I heard that went really well. Your Valentine's Day show this year, I heard, was yes. like super dope. They did like a dinner menu Sexy type of thing. Yeah, we rented out a new restaurant. You booked all the sexy comics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. What's the line of sexy? I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm, just, I'm just giving you shit. Takara. Yeah, Takara's sexy. sexy. She's funny and sexy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, That's eye candy comics. Rel hosted. Rel Battle hosted. Okay. We had Takara, Kevin Tate, yeah. RT. Mm hmm. Who's um, RT? I don't think I know him. RT Sickle. Like He's a white show. comedian. Oh, okay. He's really funny. Okay. Um, and there was someone else I can't remember. But, yeah, we did. Uh, we rented out a private restaurant. We did, like, a five-course meal um, <laughs> with wine and stuff. Um, so it was, like, a private comedy show with dinner for Valentine's. That is that is awesome. Mm-hmm. Have you done something like that, Sarah? Kind of like an out-of-the-box type of, type of show before or event? Um, I mean, not really. I used to have my show up in Mammoth. That was a little different because it was kind of restaurant style. What's, where's Mammoth? It's like what five six hours north, maybe, oh, okay. so or up there. northeast of here. It's where it's everyone in the mountains, goes to ski. like skiing and oh, yeah. I've never, I've never, I've never been. Hiking. Yeah, the, the north I've been is what Ontario. I haven't really done. The, <laughs> oh, that's east. <laughs> that's east. So I don't know. I don't know California. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still. Yeah, I'm still getting adjusted two years later. North is like a big <laughs> ski ski area that people in LA that, go to. That's what I like about California though, because you have like every kind of thing you want here. If you want to, you know, you want ocean, obviously the beach is here. If you want something like really hot valley-ish, you know, you got the Joshua tree, you got the mountains, you got the skiing mm-hmm. and you want culture, you go to Oakland. I think that's like probably one of the best things that California has to offer is like in that whole state, anything you want to do is literally there. Like in New York, we use the mountains the comedy uh, bookers will do ski trip comedy shows. So mm-hmm. they like do the weekend and people doing ski trips and they have like, maybe an R&B singer one night and the next night they have a comedy show for that whole weekend. It's just a bunch of freaky black people over 35 just doing nasty shit, but then they got that that big comedy show on Sunday, and they just have. <laughs> I love it. Okay, Chocolate Sunday Ski Week. Chocolate Sunday Ski Trip. There. There 2019. I actually really like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, awesome. Is there one in LA? I know there's like a big black group like event thing that goes to Big Bear. I think around 
uh, President's Weekend in February. I think there's like a blackout. That's what it's called, blackout ski weekend or something at Big Bear. But I don't know mm. if there's one that has comedy. You could be the first line. Right. I'm putting it out there. Okay. Yeah, I have comics like love doing the Mammoth show just for that stuff. Mm -hmm. So a lot of comics were like, yeah, I'm coming to do it just yeah, for that. It's like it, a fun weekend. The book like one night would be like somebody who was hot in the 90s like John B. And then... <laughs> And then you, the next night they do Donnell this. Jones. Donnell Jones. Yeah, you get Donnell Jones. He'll do, do that ski trip. They'll have all the ladies out. That's what I like too. I, I'm not gonna lie. Like chocolate Sundays, I would say definitely brings out the most beautiful women at the shows. Like when black comics are talking about when you're doing, I will bet. Well, it has. It's not really the same anymore. But we used to do like the Black Night Run. You know, Mo Better. The girls are, are fine there, but it's like different because it's more like you're getting. You're getting the Vixen, Stutton Magazine model, porn stars. Those are the kind of girls that go to the money show. But then Chocolate Sundays is just like these exotic, these beautiful, it's, it's chocolate, you know, shapely but not crazy. Like, because comics sometimes do pinpoint the show they want to do where they want to get some pussy. Like, that's, we're not, we, we know this. Like, you yeah, see when comics are going to really? the extra door. mile, right? <laughs> yes, that's a, how bad is the thirst? You guys have seen it. Like, do comics well, really know, do I to be doing too much? You know where I sit? Sometimes comedians sit, and that's like oh, yeah, the runway. The restroom? Mm -hmm. That is the runway where oh, yeah, yeah, walk. Oh, yeah, yeah. You pull them right yeah. when they come out the bathroom. That, I wish I could mic us up and video and have a show right there in my corner. Mm. The conversations we have and the things we see yeah. right there, that would be a hit show in right. that little corner. The corner. Uh, okay, Sarah, you've also, um, so you've managed some tours before, right? Or some um, something like that? When yeah. you work with, not really, you want I think I've ever really done tours. Okay, but just maybe certain. She just like does help. five yeah. shows a help. week in town. It seems like I've she's helped. on. But I remember when you were helping with comics Dave. on the road and uh, stuff. I've never done road stuff. Okay, Dave. but you did help the Radio City, right? Was that you? I helped with the party. You helped with the party. Mm -hmm. Sarah, also, you guys are two a great good party uh, event planners. Yeah. Because uh, I remember I went to Dave's burlesque show like a couple years ago. Yeah. That was like one of the that dopest was the things Radio I've ever City. seen. No, no, no. It was before that. It was like. You know, um, it was like 2015, 2016. You had it like in the Lower East Side. Oh, wait, New York or L.A.? No, it was in New York. It was like um, by Delancey Street, like off of Essex. It was not at the box. No, no, no. Because uh, I remember after we all went to um, what's the spot on 14th Street cafeteria cafeteria. But before that party, there was a masquerade yeah, yeah. party. I remember going to cafeteria. It was, yeah, because that was like at 4 a.m. But um, that was Radio City. I know because I, I wasn't there for Radio City. I didn't get to go to Radio City shows or the party. Okay. But it was great. Okay, I want to ask you guys this. So, um, obviously, if you ask the average person who's their favorite comics, they'll probably say Kevin Hart or Louie or Burr or Rock or whatever like that. I want to ask you guys, uh, coast to coast, New York, L.A., wherever, who are your top five comedians doing it like right now that we could say are, are not famous? So they're not like household names, but that are doing it right now, regardless of if they're young and killing it or they've been around a long time and killing it and just people just still don't know who they are. Who are your like top fives like in this right now personal top five space? Okay, I could go. So no, it could be famous? biased. Yeah. Like, Donnell. Like, what? Donnell's borderline. He's, he's, right he's, there. Yeah, he's right there. Okay, well, Donnell is one of my favorites and everyone knows Vincent Oshana. Vincent Oshana, okay. I love Tony Baker. Okay. Nate Jackson. Four, okay. And I'd have to think about who the fifth person is. Okay. I need a minute. See, I have so, so you many. Four. All right. you I have give, so many that I couldn't... Five. Just right, who are you, who are you I feeling mean, right like, now? So is Neil like Neil? too famous? Neil's too, Neil's too famous. Neil's too famous. Yeah, he's got a bunch of specials and stuff. Um, or is Godfrey too famous? I don't know. No, Godfrey's there. not too famous. Okay, Godfrey... Ian Edwards. Ian, okay. All right. Well, Sebastian, too? He's kind of there. I just saw him in a movie the other day. And we're saying um, two oh God, We're saying so favorites many. like make us laugh the hardest. Make us laugh the hardest. Like not who's Resume, the best person. Resume, accolade. Who's the, no, fuck yeah. per, their person, how they treat no. you. Just they do it for you. Whatever reason, you laugh the hardest or love what they're saying when they're on stage rocking. So that's, yeah, that's my the criteria for this one. 
Okay. There's so many. I don't know. I know. Sarah just doesn't want to hurt anything. No, no. I feel so political. Political. Whenever yeah. people She's ask so me, I name like 20 comics. Like there's so many mm -hmm. all across the board. Okay. You know? The last five what? comedians you want to hear before you die. Ooh, there we go. Like, yeah. You, 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 you stranded on, a, on yeah. an island. Wait, there's like You want to get comic. five specials before you, you want to get five specials before your life is going, your heart passes out. Yes. So you only get to watch five specials on that island that day before. There's a projector set up somewhere. There's Wi-Fi. I don't know how that shit got hooked up, but you get okay. five more five more comics to watch, do an hour or whatever like that before they go. Okay, I still say Neil Ian. Okay. Um, I thought we said Neil was too famous. Oh, sorry. Uh, Neil is too famous. Oh, so yeah, so yeah, who, Neil. Oh, Godfrey. Godfrey, Godfrey okay. Ian. Okay. Um, I'm trying to even think. Jeez. Um, it's so tough. I like Harlan Williams. Okay. Uh, Harlan's Harlan's like he's like dry humor, right? He's like kind of like you don't see it. It's just a little different. Yeah, he reminds yeah, me. Yeah, he, him and that's like what Kevin I like. Nealon. He's like himself. Oh, Kevin Nealon, I love. He makes me laugh a lot. Loki. Um, Tony Rock. Gosh, he, Tony Rock. Tony's fire. Hands down. He might be Tony too Rock. famous. No, nah, not really. Okay, you'd be surprised. Yeah, Tony yeah. Rock for sure. And he, what I love about him is his jokes are good. And his improv, like his crowd work. Yes. All of it. And on and off stage. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, he's amazing. Um, who else? I'm forgetting. Who do I book a lot? <laughs> <laughs> what am I at to? Three or four? You said Godfrey, Tony. Godfrey, Tony. Uh, Ian. Ian. Um, I think that Dan was. Daniel Tosh is too Tosh? famous. Tosh? Yeah, right? he's too yeah. famous. Yeah, come um, on now. <laughs> Come, he's the, the, the Comedy Central. Like, oh, you know how Lachlan Patterson. Oh, oh yes. okay. I love Lachlan. Lachlan's really good. Love him yeah. too. Um, Greg Fitzsimmons. Mm, okay. Interesting. All right. See, that's Greg. good. So people yeah. don't know, just check out Greg Fitzsimmons for sure. Yeah, he's great. How about women? Let's go with women. I want to be a list. Women. Don't do this. Favorite yes, women. I have to because <laughs> we got to show the ladies love. Y'all love. Look, I just so want to Do you not think women are funny? Do you don't think no. women are funny? No. You don't think women are no, funny? I mean, there are some. She there is. Are some. No, no, don't do that. There not, are kidding. some. But I just want to support them so much. Yeah. But I just cannot find a lot of funny women. But I'm subjected to mostly black female comedians. I know there are non-black female comedians that are really funny that are mm -hmm. doing well. Yeah. Um, but they're just not, and they just all talk about pussy and sex. But don't like, guys, male want, comics have sections in this that it's pussy and do, sex? They do, and the ones that are really funny to me don't talk about that. Tony Baker, Donnell, mm -hmm. um, Nate, like Vincent, none of those guys that I love talk about mm -hmm. pussy and sex. I mean, Donnell's it can be in there. Top of mine. Uh, yeah. For females, mm -hmm. yeah. Zainab, Candace, Thompson, okay. Taylor Shout Tomlinson, out to Zainab, Candace. Kelsey Cook. By the uh, way, all women that don't talk about pussy. No, they don't, no yeah. uh, Kelsey Cook talks a lot Marina about Marina Franklin. Mm -hmm. I like Marina. Uh, there's a lot of New York. You know what it is? Zaynab. I can't. Zaynab is so smooth. She could talk about pussy, but not make you feel like she's talking because Zaynab yeah, just has this delivery and great. this cool vibe. Like, yeah, I like Zaynab. She's she's sneaky. Like, she yeah. is like effortlessly sexy. Yeah, which is she, yeah. Yeah. my favorite type of woman. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, all right, top five uh, ugly, funny. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. All right, all right. Let, so many all right, last ones. one. So we want to do favorites. Okay, here we go. Now we'll expand the pool a little bit. If you can book. Your most awesome comedy show ever. You get a host and a host and five five comics. So that would be like, yeah, everybody would do like 15 minutes. Set. So yeah, a host and five. How many do you do for chocolate? How many is on the lineup? Usually four. So, okay. So if you got a host and four, what would that lineup be? And you get to use everybody's everybody's game. Well, what your, type of show is it? It's just your favorite all-time comedy show like that you would just want to see. Well, wouldn't that be our top five? No, because it could be guys who are from the past, like if you love uh, it. Oh, it, you mean it's like famous. Everybody's included. Dead or Alive. I mean, yeah, who would you want to see? Eddie yeah. Murphy. Host? Yeah. I would think host Tony it? Rock's one of my hands-down favorites. So you I mean, Tony not just comic, it? but host. Okay, yes, all right. Who would, book your, who would be booked to host your show? We're going to do this one by one. So, okay. Yeah. See, who, who I need time host? to think about this. Right. This is, I know. Yeah. This is pressure this is on like me. I homework. Like, can I like we come back? Can we come back in a year and <laughs> we'll come back have time to uh, prepare? Time. I don't know if we'll be here in a year. Yeah, I would have to think about that. <laughs> really? Who would host your favorite all-time show? Yeah. Damn. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll play along. So, uh, for my ho the hosting, um, I would have... Uh, <laughs> For my, I probably have Jamie Foxx host the show when Jamie's like really working his shit. I think he's really good because there's Jamie that's 
it can be lazy and then it's like not good. But if, if Jamie's on his point on, on, on one, I'd have him host the show. Because yeah, he can do everything. Yeah, he can do everything. So I know mm-hmm. he would throughout the whole show he'd just That's have something. Sing, dance. Yeah. All right, who would be your first comic to crack the show open? Who would be the who would you oh, go with your first one? Crack the show open. You didn't tell me I had to think order now too. Um can I figure out my lineup and then do the order? I get a host okay. and four comics. A host five? and four. You get a host and four. Okay, probably I would have Tony. You want to guess what? <laughs> right, yeah, can I? Can I throw an over? Uh, probably Tony Neal. Okay. I'd probably do Tony Neal. So Neal will go first. D- no, not oh. necessarily. Oh. For mine, Tony I, I, Neal, I would have uh, Dave Donnell and. Who will close? Eddie Murphy. Okay, Eddie will close. And you'd say, let Eddie do it. Just do whatever you so want. So you would have Neil Donnell over Kevin, over Richard Pryor, over like all. Because mm-hmm. he's talking about yeah. anybody ever. Uh, I, I would okay. have uh, I would have D-Ray go first on my show. I don't know. For whatever reason, when I was young and when the Def Jams and those shows came out or Com View, I used to always just laugh at D-Ray shit. Like, I don't, like, I don't know why his... His yeah, comedy, no, awesome. his style works like just. I really like it watching it. Um, D Ray will go first see, on my show. Robin Williams, I forgot about. It, see. Then I take it really left, and then Chris Rock would have to go after D Ray, and then he'll make the he'll just change the whole energy of that. Mm-hmm. Um, then third, I'd have Damon Wayans go. He's That's like awesome. He's my top top. Uh, and then Eddie would senior. Close. Yeah, Damon senior. senior. Yeah, okay. Damon Junior is funny too, but Damon Senior is, is the one that did it for mm-hmm. me. I think with his characters and. Those kind of bits that he does, and like, yeah. So he's still my favorite. Yeah, see, it's so it's yeah. so Eddie tough when you add in okay, everybody like, too, Tosh. Yeah, and... I feel like I have to make something really clear to What's you. Up? Is that, you know that answer you said that I said about the booking or whatever and running the business? Uh, That's a real thing. I, I really, I, yeah. Um, I was just curious. Sarah is like a comedy expert and okay. a booker. I mean, okay. Sarah does this. Can you I make a good really... living as a booker? Let's go <clears throat> on air. As a just booking, yeah. no, no, you have to no, do something no, no, no. else. You need yeah. a day job, okay? Yeah, or yeah, like any, especially if you're just working for like a club, okay. like no. Even on the road, like if somebody worked as booker as the improvs or whatever, if they book like I three, mean, no, no, I wouldn't. Still? I wouldn't say. Okay. I just thought like, maybe, I, I maybe mean, it'd be a feasible I, job. It's not. It doesn't pay. I mean, de- I guess depending the lifestyle you want to live. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah, what? I, but my point was that she's an expert in comedians. I mean, she knows all of them and she books all of them. Mm-hmm. I really am more about the business. Okay, mm-hmm. I book chocolate Sundays, but I focus more on the marketing and the production as a whole. So comedy still is new to me. That's why I'm trying to go out and see people because yeah. now I'm booking. But it really is like I'm not a comedy person. That's great. So when and you ask all these questions, I'm just like, I don't know. What I mean, you think? I, well, you know, I, you I'm know. like, you want to talk about like Facebook ads or something? Yeah. We could talk about that, but well, I, I maybe the next time we come back, we'll get more into into business uh, stuff. And so. I feel like yeah. Lonnie is, and you're kind of the same way with music. Mm. Like you know what type of music you like, and that's it. And you're the same way with comedy, you, and I'm the heavy? same What's way the with comedy as I am with music. I like everything. Okay. So one day. I'm going to wake up and listen to one thing. The next day I might listen. Like, if you get in my car, you never know what you're about here. road trip. Okay. And I'm the same way with comedy. Like, Who you think got the better playlist even, between you two? Who got the better playlist? Hers is just going to be all... <laughs> like, trap Lonnie. Trap, trap Lonnie. Yeah. Okay. Mine, yeah, it's going to... You never know. All like, right. like I was close with, like, my grandfather growing up. So I listened to, like, Hot Rod Classics. <laughs> like, you <laughs> never know that's, what you're getting in my car. That's what's up. But I listen to Trap. Like, it's all over. I, w- I would really be curious if Sarah twerks with... in front of the mirror but when she's starting her day. Like, if, if, I find, if Sarah, you don't even have to share like a whole Instagram story video, just like a I couple never, seconds. I never, never, never. I always tell it. everybody now, I would never post a twerking video ever. Yeah, Sarah, I don't think Sarah gets on the floor and does, <laughs> does this in front of the mirror or does a tippy toe selfie. If Sarah did a tippy toe, do I don't think she's doing a tippy toe selfie. But, anyways, uh, ladies, I want to thank you both for, uh, for coming through today. I think we had a, a really good time just talking shit and comedy and, you know, love and relationships. And I hope what you guys are both seeking out in men, guys, step up to the plate because mm-hmm. these are two really dope women, um, and they're fun. They're not boring. They have, they live really great lives, and they're just good people on top of everything. Um, what do you guys have coming up? If you want to just you know promote the fa- to the fans or listeners, and what you got coming up, well, how can I follow you? Well, they can follow me on Instagram at Lonnie Dotty. Who likes to party? L a n i d o t t y. Okay. 
Um, Chocolate Sunday 2019 is going to be a big year for us. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff, but you can see us every week at the Lab Factory, 7 and 9.30 at the Lab Factory in Hollywood. Um, and then follow us at Chocolate Sundays. Awesome. Sarah, what do you got uh, on the pipeline? Uh, most of it. I probably don't want to say just because it's all. Damn, I can't give them the like exclusive. Tra- like interns. There's only like 50 listeners. <laughs> but here. I mean, it's just, okay. you know, it's same Instagram at Mellow Comedic. So M E L L O C O M E D I C. And if they follow that, they'll or, get the exclusive when that's ready to drop. So that I post like the comedy store shows okay. and stuff like that. And if I have any other big shows. And they get big and famous then, people that come to their shows. Sometimes they just book, sometimes they drop in. Like, no fake shit. They, the heavy hitters roll through for their shows. So um, definitely follow those two ladies. I'm Nick Alexander, man. It's been another episode of For the Culture Podcast. Thank you, guys. We'll, we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. <laughs>